Hi, I'm Lee and I'm a New Zealander who lives in the East Riding of Yorkshire and this is my podcast about my handmade life. You can find me on Instagram as luli underscore and on Ravelry as luli and I hand make and sell knitting accessories at Shop Luli on Etsy but you can find links to all of my online places at luli.com. Whew, breathe. <laughs> I think I said all of that in one breath. This week I'm really sh- excited to show you something that um, I'm working on and I kind of want to show you first. But then if that's the most exciting thing and that's a bit boring, you might not watch to the end. But if that's boring for you and you don't watch to the end, then that's not a big deal. I don't know, maybe I should just stick with the normal format. So I usually start with community news. Um, and there's quite a bit going on at the moment. I have it all noted down in my show notes notebook. Um, so the Stash Appreciation Society has come to an end. And this was a year-long um, challenge to reflect on our stash and just think about how how we want to look going forward, how we want to use it, and yeah, just to appreciate stash. The stuff that we already have. Um, and that's been really good fun. I have closed the threads. I don't think I've closed the chatter thread yet because um, I kind of asked people to reflect on the year with, who had been participating in the Stash Appreciation Society to reflect on the year and just to comment on if they felt that it had changed their view of their stash or how they stashed or if they had resolutions around stashing. Um, and the responses have been really interesting. So if if you have been um, sort of appreciating your stash over the last 12 months and you have some reflections that you'd like to share, then pop over to that thread. Um, yeah, and put your comments in there. It's been really interesting to, to see what people had to say. So I have been logging stash in and stash Stash used, not just stash out. I have um, gifted some of my stash. My mum came to stay for a month and used up a lot of my scraps for charity knitting. Um, So I wanted to see how much I was actually knitting in the year, not just not just churn, not just recording churn, if you see what I mean. So stash used was 2.6 kilos. So I guess I like to knit in, the thing that I learned was that I like to knit in fine yarns. I like to knit in four ply and DK and those sorts of weights. So I'm not using, I'm probably using a lot of yardage, but not much weight. And stash in was 5.5 kilos. So almost double what, well, yeah over double what I'm actually using, which I thought was rather interesting. I've been trying to think up a strategy for, I mean, I like to do a little bit of willy-nilly stash shopping, but apparently my willy-nilly stash shopping is a little excessive. (laughs) I think I have, I think I'm stashing a little bit more thoughtfully these days, but it's still fun to find that skein that you really love and just pick it up to see something on Instagram every now and again and decide that you want to, you just want to have it. Um, And I've done some really fun swaps in the last 12 months with some talented yarn dyers as well and got some beautiful yarns from those swaps. So I've got lots of fun things to use in my stash and I do like to have a bit of a collection and for it to be inspiring. So I think clearing out all the the scraps and things um, and the oddments that I wasn't using and passing them on to people who loved them and would use them up was a really great thing to do last year. Um, Yeah, I think 
what I'm saying is I'm still in the process of reflecting on my relationship with my stash. <laughs> So we did have some winners. We had a finished objects thread for the Stash Appreciation Society. And then I drew a prize from the Chatter thread as well. And M's Little Nest actually won both of those. Um, she won this bag. Well, not this one. This one is mine. A bag like this, which I have not yet posted, but I will, from Craft House to Magic. And she also won the Silent Snowfall Socks pattern from Debbie Reese, and so she said that I could redraw the pattern prize and Hay Brown Berry won that and she wanted, is it the Rams and Yous blanket pattern from Kate Davies and I'm so pleased because both of those people have been really active in the group all year um, and so it's lovely to send you a prize. Yeah so I think that's been a really interesting Really interesting things to do for the year. A bit surprising about how much I am actually stashing compared to how much I'm using. Um, but I don't actually feel bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I would be really interested to hear about anything that, um, any sort of like, new themes that you'd like to pick up in the group this year about around stash appreciation maybe you'd like to see some some challenges in using stash or yeah I think I'd still I still want to I still want to reflect on my stash and what I am stashing and just be mindful about it um, and so if you have any ideas of things we can do in the group this year, that would be, that would be wonderful. Yeah, pop over to the episode thread and just let me know what you think. So the other thing that came out of the Stash Appreciation Society was actually the oldest along, which is running until the 31st of January. And that's about using your oldest cued pattern, your oldest stash, uh, finishing your oldest whip. Um, yeah, and I have one cast on that I want to do this month. But at the moment, I am in the midst of my great holiday, holiday whip down. And by holiday whip down, I may, I may mean that it lasts until Easter. <laughs> um... So yes, if you have older stash that you want to use up or you have a project in mind for, if you have an oldest whip that you want to get finished, then come and join us in the oldest along. Also, we have Knit 1000 Grands, which is also a stash down themed cow. And basically the challenge is to knit at least a kilo before the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which is... 15th of March I think. I think that was the end date that I said for that. Um, if it wasn't I would have written the correct end date in the, in the thread. But yes if you want to do, if you want to focus on finishing some things, whips are allowed, you can set your own goals, you know, beyond the thousand grams. Um, yeah, pop over to the group and I'm going to pick up a prize at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival because it's fun to pick a winner, have a look through their threads and then pick something you think they'll really like. And finally, we also have the Tiny Owls uh, knit along in the Ravelry group. Tiny Owls was a collection of patterns that I put out before Christmas. End of November, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, a, um, mittens, a hat, and I was about to say a scarf, but it wasn't, it was socks. Um, yeah, so if you're knitting one of those patterns, then come and join us in the knit along. I didn't bring my knit mittens today. I haven't, I haven't actually done any work on them, so I, I want to pick them up again this week because they've been quite fun. I love the colours that I'm using. I should have bought them to show you, but I haven't. Oh no, here they are. Stand by. I rounded up all my whips just so I could 
have a sense as of what. Here we go. So that's my current tiny owl mitten. And of course, colour work always looks way better after you block it. Yeah, so those have been good fun. And it's going to be good fun to think of a recipient for them because I really like the colours in those. But yes, if you're knitting any of those patterns, then come and join us in the Knit Along. Um, there are some tips in the Knit Along thread as well, and that will run until the end of February. And that, lovely people, is community news. Some concerned friends have been asking about the welfare of my Boverton cardigan, um, which is a Norwegian pattern from Kofterbukken. Um, and so those inquiries inspired me to get knitting on it again. And so I have started, whoops, yarn down. I have started knitting on the sleeve. Actually, this is the third time I've started knitting on the sleeve because Kofterbukken is in Norwegian and I don't speak Norwegian and I just thought, well, I know how to knit a sleeve so I'll just do it. So the first time I knitted the sleeve, for some reason, I was doing funny things with my tension. I think I was just overthinking it rather than just cracking on and knitting. Um, and so the tension went really weird. So I undid it and then started again. And then I realised that my sleeve was kind of blooming. <laughs> it was getting larger between the yoke and the sleeve. It was kind of flaring out, which is not a look I was going for. And so I pulled it out again and actually bothered to translate the sleeve instructions and now everything is going swimmingly. Um, except I keep looking at the yoke and thinking, oh, that's so neat. And then looking at the rest of the little check parts and thinking, oh, that looks awful. And kind of having amnesia about the fact that I've already washed the yoke. So of course it's all nice and neat and looks great. Um, but yeah, so that's just where I am with that. And I'm using... Um, Jameson and Smith yarn and I have it in this project bag which I made out of a tea towel printed by Angela Harding um, which is just great so yeah I should probably do that thing I'm knitting it on Chow Goose because they're my favourite so yeah if you were worried about Boverton languishing then don't worry never fear it is not unloved. This is the socks segment. And I don't have... Well, I finished my tube socks before Christmas. And I don't have them to show you. So I'm going to insert some pictures here. Um, you've already seen the first pair that I've finished. And I've talked about these a wee bit. They were afterthought everything socks. And I had a sock blank that I just knitted the whole thing into a massive long tube and then I divided up the tube into two pairs of socks and that was that was actually quite good fun. I like choosing the different you know the complementary yarns that I put with them and it was just kind of it was fun to use up scraps and yeah so I'll put a picture in about here of the second pair of socks and as you can see I had to um, use auxiliary yarn to make them a bit longer and I have gifted them to the hairy man's auntie. So yeah, that was good fun. I would probably do it again. Yes, I would definitely do it again but I'm not casting on socks at the moment because I need another pair of socks like a hole in the head. I have loads of socks. Um, and I do like making socks for gifting, but at the moment I just want to finish off some, some other stuff. The second pair of socks that I have finished, I have worn and have been through the wash, so they are not beautifully blocked. 
but these are my advent socks so a lovely friend um gifted me an a homemade advent calendar with yarn advent calendar yarn and chocolate advent calendar so even better um which i think i said last time that christmas is not my favorite time of year but i really really enjoy the yarn advent calendar i think it makes the whole season a bit more bearable <laughs> oh gosh i sound so curmudgingly um i feel like a kid again because you open it up and you get this yarn that's a complete surprise and then you get to take a moment during the Christmas period just to do a little bit of knitting for yourself that's just good fun. Um, and I put this with some Drops Fable, that's what the grey is, which is the first time I've used this yarn. Um, yeah, and I love wearing my advent socks I think I think I like I like wearing them because they're like a gift from a friend all these yarns that I know that my friend has used and enjoyed and passed on little pieces on for me to enjoy and I love the process of as well of opening the calendar and sharing it with you guys um, and knitting together it's just it's just a really fun community thing to do I really enjoy it and so I wanted to start a cow um this year in the Luli group so that you guys can enjoy it too maybe you already do an advent calendar um but yeah so let me get my notes and I wrote notes about this because I thought I need to explain this clearly. <laughs> it's not a cow, it's not a knit along, it's a mini skein swap. And I thought once, yes, I'll get my notes out. So once a quarter I thought it would be fun to swap six mini skeins with somebody and that way you would end up with a homemade advent calendar by the end of the year. I know you can buy advent calendars from yarn dyers, but they often sell out really quickly, or maybe you can't afford to buy an advent calendar. Um, and I just thought this would be a really fun way of getting ready to, yeah, getting ready to have a nice advent calendar for Christmas. So, how it will work? Let me take a swig of coffee and breathe. <laughs> So, let me read from my notes. Advent mini skein swap. <coughs> so, each quarter you can join in to swap six 10 gram, 10 gram mini skeins from somewhere else, someone else, anywhere in the world. Um, so, I'll start a Ravelry thread for that. And you can, you should specify when you join up, whether you're happy to get non-superwash yarns. Um, if you're sending yarns to someone else, you should make sure they're colour fast, because of course if they're putting them into a scrappy blanket or socks, you don't want one colour to bleed all over another. That's just, that's not fun. <laughs> and I'm guessing these are yarns that you've probably knitted with and washed, so you probably know whether they're colour fast or not. Um, you don't have to join in for the whole year, you might just decide to join in for one quarter and it isn't mandatory that you use the minis for an advent calendar for yourself. So if you decide that you want to just swap six minis so that you can open them straight away and Put them into your scrappy blanket then feel free to join in the other thing is that the other reason i want to do this is because i want to make two advent calendars this year to give to people and i know that i'm probably not going to have 24 different yarns to put in to both calendars so i need to supplement it and i thought this would be a fun way to do it um 
Yeah, and finally, you should just package up all six yarns so that they're a surprise. You know, you might just put them in a twist of tissue paper or something um, and send them off to your swap buddy. Yeah, and if you want, then you can join in knitting and franken socks at Christmas time. As you open them, you can put them into your scrappy blanket. Um, you might use them like I'm going to, to um, put into a event calendar you want to swap with somebody else or you might just decide to do a scrappy cro cro crocheted blanket throughout the year and this is how you want to get more minis for that so yeah if that's something that interests you then the first quarter is open now and I'll keep it running until the 31st of January and then I shall team you up with somebody and you can swap minis yeah if you do decide, it's not mandatory that you should put in any extras with the minis, but if you do decide to pop something in with one of the mini packages, make sure it's not perishable, or something that might melt in a hot postal van, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, I once worked for a company and who did mail order, and someone in Darwin ordered a box of chocolates. In the middle of summer that was never going to arrive in one piece <laughs> so yeah just be thoughtful about that you might not want to put chocolate or I mean like I say you don't have to put anything in but if you do decide to put in a package of tea or a stitch marker or something just make sure it's not perishable and it's not going to suffer in the post mm. so you can join over in the thread that I will start shortly in the Ravelry group and I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to, um, yeah, to drum up some Advent fun. So speaking of Advent calendars, the last time I spoke to you, I showed you my Opal Advent calendar, which is basically this big box that is laid out in a book format. And I was saving this to start opening after Christmas, which is what I've been doing. Um, yeah, and every day you get a little ball of 15 grams of opal sock yarn, all random, like this. Um, and I had a cunning plan for my opal advent calendar this year. A few years ago, I'm going to have to sit back, I'll move back for this because it's big. Um, I purchased, when I had more money than time, a rigid heddle loom. And this is a knitter's loom by Ashford, so you can actually fold it in half, even when it has weaving on it, which is quite handy when you live in a little house. So when I bought this, I made one wonky scarf on it, and then it went to live under the bed. And I have been wanting to get it out and just take the time to warp it up um, and get going with it again. Um, and so what I've been doing is, as I opened each day's um, Opal Advent Calendar, I started off by making up a warp. Um, I've got some warping pegs that I attach to my table. And because... It's actually, it's, the instructions tell you how to direct warp, but we don't really have space to do that in our house. Um, and so it was easier for me to make a warp and then to put it onto the loom afterwards. Um, and I used the Craftsy class for widget, rigid heddle loom, loom, rigid heddle we, weaving, um, which was really helpful. Um, and I've mixed all the colours in with just some um, grey sock yarns. I've got a few different ones that I've been using um, up from my stash. Um, I think one was a Regia, um, one was the leftovers from my um, Advent socks. I think I've got a Coop Knits grey on my shuttle at the moment so yeah I'm just using up all the disparate bits but I thought the grey would kind of 
make the whole project look a bit more coherent and a little less just like clown vomit. Um, but basically I wanted to do this because I wasn't too invested in making something really special from the sock mini. So I knew that if I wasn't the best at it, if it was a bit wonky, that I wouldn't be distraught about wasting the yarn. Um, and I've definitely got better as I've gone along. I learnt warping was a really exper um, a real experience. I think I did it last Sunday and it was an epic experience. Um, this is about 50 centimetres wide and I have enough warp on here to make a piece of cloth about two metres long. Um, and I'm just putting each mini onto my shuttle and doing two rows of the opal colour and then two rows of grey. Um, and it's really good fun. It's creating this sort of like wonky tartan effect. Um, and it's just sort of like moving through the different colours that I've pulled out of the calendar as well. Um, so I've been really enjoying it. Yeah, this loom has these notches here. So you can lean, lean it up against your table. So I just sit here in the factory with it leaned up against my work table watching podcasts. And I'm really enjoying doing that. My edges have gotten a lot neater. Um, and I measure how many um, weft rows to the inch I have because I'm trying to sort of, I'm trying to do a balanced weave um, just for practice. And yeah, it was definitely wonky when I started. <laughs> But I've gotten better as I've gone along. So it's been a nice learning experience, actually. And I've learned how to make my edges neat when I'm changing colours and that sort of thing. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm so glad I got it out and took the time to set it up. I think that quiet period between Christmas and New Year was a good time to sort of concentrate on it because I think in the Craftsy class she says that warping is about 80% of the project and... It, it does it is time consuming and you kind of need to concentrate on it and have the space for it so yeah it was nice to just have um a few days to to work on making the warp and then to actually put it onto the loom um yeah and i'm not opening that advent calendar every day anymore i'm just opening it as i want the next ball of yarn so i'm not quite keeping up with with a ball of yarn every day um but that's no bother like i say i've got two meters of warp on here um and i'm just going to keep going until i run out of yarn or run out of warp um and then i'll have a piece of cloth somebody asked me what i was going to use it for i have no idea it's just practice <laughs> so yeah that's been super fun i've been loving having that out actually the last thing that I wanted to share with you today was a book that I found in my local library. And I don't think it's a new book. It has one of those library protectors on it, so it's all glossy. You have to hold it at the right angle. Maybe if I hold it at this angle, you'll be able to see it better. I think that's better. So it is Patchwork and Quilting, a maker's guide. And it was put out by the Victoria and Albert Museum. I noticed it doesn't seem to have an author on it. Um, but it is on Amazon. And I have been enjoying this book immensely. It, so, it goes through different techniques in both patchwork and quilting. And it has... It starts off by explaining what the technique is and what areas of the world it was used in and it has it shows pieces from the Victoria and Albert collection where that technique is used and examples and so it's not really in depth if you want to totally geek out on the details then this is kind of probably a bit light it's just a you know a page or two um, of that information and then it gives you a project to try using that technique um, and I am just so enjoying reading this book 
a lot of the projects are things that you could do without a sewing machine and there's a range of um, sort of most of them are of a complexity that if you were a a bold beginner you could have a go at it um, yeah, and you could probably do a lot of the projects with scraps and bits and pieces. There are some big projects in here as well, which I think is nice. There's a nice selection of things. Um, yeah, I've just been enjoying the um, sort of like the, the history and the the projects all together in one place. There is an embroidery book as well. I am very tempted to own this because I don't want to give it back to the library. It is just, I've been really inspired by it. Um, and as I say, if you don't have a sewing machine but you want to try some techniques, then this would be a great book to get. It has sections on things like sashiko and um, sort of, and um, English paper piecing and different techniques from all around the world. So I think the section that I wanted to show you, and the instructions are enough that, so I could make the things based on the instructions, but of course I've been sewing for a while. If you were a bold beginner, you might need a few YouTube videos or something to get you going, but Otherwise, I think the instructions are clear enough that you could have a good go at each project. Um, so, for example, I should have bookmarked the example that I wanted to, to show you. So, this is the section on cord quilting. And it has a couple of items from the um, v &A collection, so this corset, examples, um, of cord quilting, and then it has this sweet little pin cushion, and you could easily make that just sitting on the couch of an evening. Yeah, and there are some more complex um, projects that you can do. Some of them you could do with your sewing machine. So what was the other one that I wanted to show you? Oh, this is the section on whole cloth quilting. So this is a whole baby's blanket. I don't know if you can see the pictures very well. Get that focus. And if you were feeling like doing an epic hand sewing project, you could do this on your machine, or you could actually just do it of an evening on the couch. Um, yeah, I love the, I just love the history with the examples and then achievable projects that you could do yourself. Um, I'm just finding it so inspiring and like I say I'm very tempted to see if the library has the embroidery one as well and I'm actually going to London next weekend and so I think I'm going to get this book reissued to me and go and visit the Victoria and Albert Museum and see if I can see some of the examples in person that would be super fun to see them all up close because the photo is one thing and the photography in this is is good but actually seeing some of that stuff in person and seeing the textiles would just be awesome. So yeah, um, if you can find this in your local library or yeah, get it out. I think um, if you're interested in patchwork and quilting, it's just a lovely book with lots of achievable little projects so you can try out different techniques. So that is all from me for today. Um, I just, I wanted to finish off by saying a happy new year to you all. It's so nice to share some time with you and for you to come and have a coffee with me every now and again. Um, and just to join in the 
the knitting and makerly community and I'm really excited to 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 share 2018 with you. Um, if you've enjoyed the podcast then you can subscribe below or come and join in in the Ravelry group or both <laughs> and I shall see you next time. Cheerio!